Hi guys, I'm Hayes. I'm an artist SP painter from Malaysia and today I'll be teaching you guys how to do this really really easy portrait in Procreate. So this is a really easy method but some of you might call it cheating but there is a purpose to every process so I'll share more later on. Anyway, all of the brushes that you see me use in this tutorial can be downloaded using the link in the description. So without further ado, let's start with our tutorial today. So with your reference of the portrait that you want to paint, find a photo and then you load it into your iPad then we are going to bring this into a photo editing app called Facetune where there is Liquify. There is also a Liquify filter right now in Procreate but the controls are a little bit finicky so I'm still sticking with Facetune for this time around. So once we have loaded the picture into Phase tune, we are going to go into the reshape function and from there we can liquefy our photo. So here we have two functions called reshape and resize. The first one we are using is the reshape and we are just going to pull in the jaw a little bit to slim down her face so that it looks a little bit more illustrative. You can also adjust the brush size using the brush icon. And now we're going to move on to our resize tool so that we can resize the features on her face which for example like the eyes, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. After that, we are just going to save the file once we are done editing her face and we're going to bring this into Procreate right now. In Procreate, I'm going to import the photo by clicking on the tool icon and clicking on insert a photo and then I'm going to pick the photo that we have edited just now. Then we're going to hit the cursor tool and then right away we're going to hit the fit to screen tool. We can also adjust this by pinching our fingers and resizing the image to fit our canvas. Now I'm going to use the saturation brush from my portrait brush pack and recolor the portrait a little bit with um, pink to saturate her cheeks and her nose. All you have to do is to pick the color that you want just like makeup and then you paint it over her face and it will be replaced with the color that you chose. I also chose green to recolor the eye a little bit so that it's more vibrant. Now I duplicate this layer and I play around with the hue, saturation and brightness tool a little bit to recolor the entire photo in general. Now I tap on the layer and hit the mask button to create a layer mask. I select it and I choose black right now and I paint this entire layer black. This will disable the entire layer from showing up. And now I'm going to pick the airbrush and I'm going to select white. So if I paint white on this layer, it will make the layer show back up and visible once more. So I'm just going to paint certain parts of the face to have white so that those areas will be more saturated. Once we are happy with how everything looks, we can then merge all the layers into one and we will have our final photo reference for our portrait painting. To prepare for the tracing, I turn down the opacity of this layer. And 
and then I tap on the plus icon to create another layer this will be the layer where I will sketch the drawing using the sketch brush I begin to sketch the portrait out by tracing the layer underneath so Usually, I put them as a reference in the left panel, but today we are just tracing this portrait because we don't want to worry about the drawing. Sometimes it's okay to do this um, for practice because we are just trying to copy a painting and we can still learn a lot from it. So there's nothing wrong with tracing. Today, we're just going to take it easy and do this tracing so that beginners can follow along with this tutorial. But if you feel like you want a challenge, you can always save the photo separately and load it up in a multitasking panel and um, try and sketch with that as a reference instead of tracing the portrait. Once you're done sketching, you can click on the layers icon. Clicking on the first layer that we have, the photo reference, you're going to just slide it to the left and duplicate it. Drag it all the way to the top and then change the opacity to 100%. Then you're going to click on the transform tool on the top and make it smaller by pinching with your fingers. You can put this at the side of your portrait and refer to this while you paint today. Then we will create a new layer underneath the sketch and we can begin painting on this layer. First, I'm going to just select a swatch for the background color and dragging the swatch from the top right hand corner, I can drag it to the canvas to color the entire canvas pink. I then make a new layer on top of the pink background and we start painting on this. I'm just using the painting brush and what we're going to do is I'm just going to pick the color from the tiny reference in the corner and I'm painting them in the exact same location of the sketch. So if you didn't get that, I'm going to repeat this again in slow motion. So first, we're going to hold this square button here with our left finger and using our right finger, we're going to tap at the tiny reference picture on the spot to pick a color. Once you have the color that you want from the spot, you are going to release the right finger first, then the left finger. The selected color will show up in the icon on the top right corner. And then we are going to just adjust our brush size before we paint on our layer in the exact same location compared to the reference. So I continue in this same way, picking colors um, from the reference and painting them in the spots that I see to slowly build up my painting. What we are essentially doing is we are selecting the exact same color from the reference and dropping them down into our painting so that we have the exact same color as the photo reference. Again, this might seem like we are cheating because we are taking the drawing out of the equation and we are now also taking values and colors out of our equation. But this is a great way for beginners to learn because they will start to see how tonal values form and how colors work with each other when they are correct. This way, when we are using this approach, we can focus more on getting our brush strokes to be aesthetically pleasing later on. So we don't have to worry about our sketch drawing color or values at this point in time. But at any time that we want to challenge ourselves, we can always just stop tracing or copying colors and values. 
there are still a lot to learn using this process because sometimes we expect the whites of our eye to be totally grey but when we pick the colour they seem a little bit more red than we expect them to and this way we can adjust our expectations when we paint uh, without copying tones and colours also, there's a tendency to use oversaturated colors when we are painting freestyle. So, when we are doing this process of color picking, we tend to realize that tones are a lot more grayer than they appear to be. And we this way, we can adjust and improve our sensitivity towards chroma and value. Sometimes we assume that tones are lighter than what they should be but when we pick the colors we actually find out that oh it's actually a lot darker even though I thought it would be lighter and this way we can also learn more about the values of how things are in relevance to the actual photo reference. Therefore, it is very important to use this process to learn instead of just blindly copying because this is the only way that we can improve as artists. Try to observe the parts of the lips that um, is close to the skin color instead of just being red and we will be able to create more realistic lips next time. Also, as you're working on the shadows, try and notice which parts of the shadow are getting more saturated or desaturated. Remember that we are just using a hard brush, the regular painting brush in my Procreate brush set um, to just block in all the colours. There is no smudging and no soft brushes at this time, so there is really no need to use a smudge brush. The painting should start looking pretty close to a portrait with some soft and hard edges coming around but if you notice that the shapes of the colors are very distinctly apart then you know that you have to pick more colors in the surrounding areas to give a more gradual transition between all the shapes of colors. If you have done this right, you shouldn't need to blend a lot in the next stage because it will still look pretty soft and you just need to push some tones around but if everything starts to look a little bit harsh, you still need to pick more colours and make things a lot more gradual. Now we can use our smudge brush to push the tones around and soften the edges that we want to soften. Just remember that the point of this tutorial today is this part here where we are smudging because we didn't really sketch our portrait from scratch and we didn't work on our values and colors separately. So this is the only part where we are exercising any aesthetic or an artistic um, process here so make sure that our brush strokes are pretty and is in the direction that we want so this tutorial is a fantastic time for you to work out the beauty of your brush strokes especially when it comes to painting and smudging they're actually the same thing so just work on getting your brush strokes to look pretty and that would do if you'd like to know more about blending, smudging, soft edges and hard edges, you can always watch the smudge brush pack tutorial in my channel. But for now, I'm just going to repeat a few important things which is to use the correct brush size when you are smudging, not too big because you will lose a lot of detail and not too small because that will make things a little bit more patchy and messy. A good idea of a brush size that is correct is to use a brush size that is roughly the same size as the patch of color shape that you are trying to blend out. Also be mindful about the direction of your brush strokes. They should follow the wrinkles, lines and contours of the face features and the light and shadow shapes as well. So you can always make a choice on which direction to flow towards. 
In this stage, you will also get to decide which ages that you keep soft and which ages that you want to keep hard. So for ages that you want to keep soft should be within the same zone. So for example, if they are all within the same shadow zone, those ages should be soft. And if they are in the light zone, they should be soft as well. But, but the boundaries of shadow and the boundaries of light should be kept hard age. For the areas with very small details, remember to use a smaller smudge brush size so that you can get all of the colors without um, reducing the amount of details within them. You should also check the reference frequently to see where you should blend towards. If you are lacking some details, you can always just take the sketch brush and sketch them in but be mindful of the colour and the values when you do so If you find that when you blend and the colours doesn't really blend well together it means that you probably have to paint more tones in between for a more gradual blending Once again, I'm using the sketch brush to sketch in the details that I've missed out earlier on. Once you have finished blending the skin, it's time to do the details. Right now, I'm just putting in shadows for the lashes and the hair. I'm just using the sketch brush to do this. It's really simple. And now I'm just cleaning up the tight details for all the lines in the drawing. Now I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to pick the pupil base brush. Then I'm going to create a new layer on top of my current one. And I'm just going to adjust the size of the brush and tap it onto my canvas. Now I'm just going to duplicate this layer so that it shows up more. I'm going to merge it back down so that it becomes one layer again and I'm going to reposition them. Once I've repositioned the first eye, I'm going to duplicate this layer and using the transform tool again, I'm going to drag it to the other eye, repositioning if necessary. Once I'm done, I'm going to merge both layers down and I'm going to tap on the canvas for a long time. Once the menu pop up, I'm going to hit on alpha lock. If the alpha mode is on, it will make sure that every time you paint on the canvas, you will only be able to paint on areas that has been painted before. So now, we can actually choose the color of the eyes, which is something of like a green color, and we can paint over our current pupil base. We can also give it a gradient by clicking on a darker color and painting it lightly over it. If you do not have any color palettes, you can also download them from my color palettes tutorial and also from my link in the description.
I can also hit on the end icon and adjust the opacity to um, reduce the effect of this layer and then I will just use the eraser and erase parts of it that I don't want once I'm happy, I can just merge it down with the final layer. Now we can finally work on the details. I can use my sketch brush and slowly um, draw all the finer details. As I'm sketching in the newer details, I am still picking the colors from my reference so that I have the correct color. So now's the time to channel your inner creativity and do a good drawing for all the details. Now using the Freestyle Highlights brush, I am just putting in the highlights for the nose and around the lips Also on the tear ducts, below the eye and on the eyelid itself You do not have to use pure white when you're using this brush, in fact you shouldn't So you can just pick any colour like dusty pink or dark brown even Or reds or blues or greens and it will create a brightening effect due to the nature of this brush if you're unsure of what color to choose, you can always download my color palettes and there is already a palette that is readily available for highlights. You can do these highlights on the same layer or on a new layer, it doesn't matter, you will still be able to achieve the effect. I'm using the Soft Brightening Sparkles brush to put some glitter highlights on the cheeks first before I use the Freestyle Highlights brush to put in more harsh highlights on this area So typically, it's just a good practice to use this um, Brightening Sparkles brush below any highlights that you intend to put so areas like the nose, the forehead or the brow bone or the cheeks be good so just layer them down first before you put in any harsh highlights and then when you're back to using the featured highlights freestyle brush make sure that the highlights that you draw in are quite tiny so that they resemble sparkles one if they are too big it might be um, a little bit unnatural but for areas like the nose and the lips the highlights can be more streaky and thicker depending on your choice of photo After you're done with the highlights and the textures of the skin, you're finally ready to do the hair and the lashes. So just use the sketch brush and give it a small size. But when you're sketching, make sure that you are following the direction of the natural direction of the hair. For the color that you should use, you can just pick it from the portrait or from the reference itself. Don't forget that you can also use the same technique we use for the pupils base and you can create a new layer and do your lashes on this new layer using just any color 
and once you are done with the lashes on the layer you can then turn on the alpha mode to lock its alpha channel and then you can also paint all the lashes in a gradient that you want so that not all of them appear to have the same color After you are done with all the details and finalizing everything on the face, you can then um, proceed to rewind back and pick the colors from the reference photo to paint in the hair. You can choose to paint the hair on a different layer if you do not want to mess with all the layers that you have currently. Once you have blocked in the hair and then now you can use the hair brush to paint in the strands of the hair You can also switch to the strand brush if you want to do single strands of hair Once you're done with the hair, you can then take a look at the portrait again and redo any other details that you have, might have missed so far and finalize and finish up the painting. The techniques are all there already, I've shown you how to do it, so it should be pretty simple from this point forward, it's all up to your creativity. Okay, thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, you can just drop them down in the comment section below. Sometimes I may not answer because I'm quite busy, but I do read every single one of them and I will address the concerns and questions um, regarding anything in my next videos. So I hope to see you again soon and remember to subscribe, like and follow my Instagram as well. I'll see you next time. Bye!